10 seconds. Yay, I'll pick my key. Okay, so we are live. Um, just let me get back. Hi, I'm Sarithkin. I am out in Ontario, and this is my interview with Duke Temer from Artemisia. Um, I think he's Duke number maybe 12 um, in my series of hopefully 50 plus Dukes um, to fulfill my uh, quest this year. Um, and I'm really excited to talk to Timur because he's fun and, uh, you know. <laughs> so, entertaining. I'm fun and entertaining. Yes, you are. <laughs> so, um, so Timur, why don't we just start at the beginning? Like, how did you find the SCA and where? Whew, how did I find the SCA and where? Um, so when I first started, I was, I've been involved in one form of martial arts one way or another since I was really young, like five years old. My grandmother absolutely loved, loved Bruce Lee. And she thought growing up in Jersey, it's good to know how to defend yourself a little bit. So that's when I started. And as time progressed on, you know, stay stuck with it. And one day I was talking to my sensei at the time and we were talking about weapons and weapons form. And he was mentioning one of the drawbacks that we have um, is safety because we can't really go with a certain amount of speed, a certain amount of contact because of lack of gear. I'm like, that's unfortunate. And he's like, well, you kind of like history, don't you? I'm like, yeah. I'm like, well, I know a guy. <laughs> and uh, he introduced me to a friend of mine named Dragon. And Dragon uh, is like, oh, you're interested in the SCA. Let's talk about Let's talk about this. And he introduced me to the fighting aspect. You know, he helped me build my first suit. He, um, he basically gave me a great introduction of what the dream was. And I was blown away to even think that something like this was actually alive and a real, real thing that you can actually be, you know, that's, that's tangible. You know, people actually do this. And I fell madly in love with the fighting aspect of it. Um, the rest of it definitely came later. But that's how, that's how I initially got started. Um, there's a small... Um, province of Aeroflight down in uh, Provo, Utah, mundanely, Artemisia. And that's, where I, that's where I got my start with, uh, with Dragon. And, you know, he's, uh, he's passed away since, but he, he did. He helped me make my first suit, my first helmet. And uh, he, he was very blunt. He's like, there are two ways to build your stuff. You can either, or to get stuff, you can either build it yourself or you can buy it. So do you have time or do you have money? And, you know, I was a poor college kid at the time, you know, freshman year at college. I'm like, well, I guess I'm going to build it because I have, I have enough for 10 packets of ramen this week. So, yay. <laughs> and that's, that's pretty much how I initially got started with SBA. Um, I, I have to say initially because I, I, I suited up with him. I started fighting with him. And then I wanted to get more involved, more part of the, of the bigger picture, bigger scene. And I met my first knight. I was introduced to him. His name was uh, Shannon Iron Tree. He and I got along, and he taught me some insanely great basic stuff. And we we it was a good relationship. However, he was busy with his life, and I was a little bit busy with school, so the relationship wasn't working out. And I use relationship because anyone who's ever been either you know whether it is a Laurel and a apprentice, Proje and a Pelican, whatever have you. It, it is a relationship. And so the relationship wasn't working out. No, not because it was a bad situation, just both of us were being very different with life. And so I, he and I, I resigned my belt and he understood and he was totally fine and gracious with it. And I spent about a year just kind of trying to figure things out. You know, where do I go now? You know, I, I was a squire, I'm now not, I'm not a squire, what direction do I want to go? And then I met this weird guy, came home from the Navy. And uh, he and I became, we met and it, it pretty much clicked. Uh, he'll, he can tell you his side of it, but it pretty much clicked. And I really appreciated the way he carried himself, the way he presented himself. I'm like, you know, that's, that's kind of how knights should behave. Now, granted, no one's perfect. And since then, I've seen plenty of my own flaws. But the general presentation, the way he comported himself, the way he tried handling himself, it's like, you know, that's the direction I want to go. And he opened me up, not just to the fighting aspect of SCA, but the greater part of it, you know, what it was to be part of the dream, 
be actively involved with it, to, to serve and not to commit service, but to actually be of service and to help people and to help the stream that help progress. And um, that was my time. And that's how uh, my relationship with uh, His Grace Sean started. I will always be a squire and I appreciate everything he still teaches me to this day. So I've been fortunate. I was very fortunate that my path led me to him because it was, it was really good. So you met him before he reigned, right? Um, yes. So, so did you serve him while he reigned? Um, I met him. We, we became friends. I met him when he was, um, just before he became um, uh, ascended to the principality thrones of Artemisia. And it was funny because I remember seeing him, I'm like, okay, I'm going to approach him, but I'm going to wait till he steps down because that would be really rude to just be like, hey, I know you just won the tournament, but would you find me? So, um, so yes and no. Yes, as far as the principality is concerned, no, because shortly after he stepped down, he and I had a very good conversation. He took me in as his man at arms. And then I was his squire at, um, before his first um, county reign. So, yes. But he had already served as, um, as principality, uh, prince for Artemisia. So what did you learn by um, having your knight reign so quickly after you squired to him? The beauty of our game it is truly the Wizard of Oz, where you have everything that happens in front of the curtain. And then you have all the stuff that happens behind the curtain that for the magic to happen. And that's what I learned. I learned what it actually takes to, to be there, to be able to help someone out. Um, and as our friendship progressed, um, the responsibilities changed. So at first it was new squire, well, not even squire, I think it was a man at arms at the time. Well, you know, new to him, new to service, helped him with stuff, helped set up court, helped, you know, what is proper protocol for Artemisia? And uh, it's a really cool new term, inner kingdom anthropology, because not all kingdoms are the same. What? Crazy. Learned that crash course really well through him as well. And I say crash course because it was really one of those, hey, we're going here this week. Hey, we're going here this week because, you know, gas was like 75 cents a gallon. So, hey, we could go everywhere. And we did. We really, really did. Um, I remember he showing up to his house, we're talking one day, and he's like, hey, guess what? You're, where you're going next week? And I'm like, where am I going next weekend? There's this event in North Shield, you've been invited, and you're going as our representative. I'm like, yay. <laughs> Go home and find out where North Shield was. I'm like, I'm going to the Dakotas. Hey, friends, guess where we're going in three weeks? We're going to the Dakotas. <laughs> they were like, what? I'm like, yeah, it'll be fun. Are you sure? I'm like, yeah, positive. Look at this event, it looks amazing. I'm like, okay, sure. And it was, it was, it was an absolutely amazing event. But I really, really learned on, well, continue to learn. Can't say learn, but continue to learn at that age is how much work and how much to, to put in the magic to make it happen. And it wasn't, one thing that I learned really fast is that it's not about the crown being served. It's about the crown serving the populace. And, you know, and, and I was fortunate. I, it, was, it was a very sudden, you know, it was a very deep dive in real fast on what, you, what it takes to learn. And once again, new squire, so I didn't know all the nuances. Um, watching Sean go through it, watching Sean go through the stress, watching him make mistakes, watching him make corrections. You know, not every crown is gonna be able to do everything for their populace, but they can try. And so as a young, young squire, brand new, that was my thing, like, okay, what, just being able to take that education in and being able to, to absorb it and use it, um, sometimes not as well like should have or could or can still, but still being able to use that kind of education as I serve the populace as well. So, so. did you start out as a sword and shield fighter? Yes, yes I did and I loved it, still love it for that matter. Um, it is, It is the, for our sport, and people have different, different opinions and everyone's the type of them. That's very cool. That's one of the beauties of our sport. It's not just one thing. There's so, so much out there. But I started out with sword and shield, um, heater, heater and um, sword to be specific. And I loved it. It was great. It was really, really cool. I had this wonderful thing in my left hand that can block a lot of stuff. Um, and then I 
I could, you know, concentrate on trying to do something with this other hand. Um, and so that was really neat. It was really great um, being able to pick up the nuances, be able to figure out how to use those tools and adapt them is really neat. And then as time progressed on, uh, shortly after I was knighted, I realized that, hey, you know what? Maybe I need to be a little bit more focused on my persona. Um, this heater thing wouldn't be, of course, it'd be a bow and arrow, but let, let's, let's look at something a little bit farther. So um, a couple choices, a small conical round or a small oval. And so I went with the small oval and I loved it. Loved the center held oval. It was a blast. Um, in fact, I want to say I won my first two crowns with the center held oval. And it, it was being able to pick that up and being able to use it, being able to know how to use it, um, both the pros and cons has helped actually with my fighting education. Cool. Um, so I'm curious, when, when you were squired to Sean, um, he hadn't quite developed his training philosophy yet, right? No, he no. hadn't. He had some really good stuff. It doesn't nearly, mm, let me take a step back. It wasn't as refined as we get it today. There's a lot of trial and error, a lot of, well, I'm, he, I'm speaking and you're not hearing me. So I need to re, try to redo this again. And it was really cool because between like myself, Sherlock, Michael, all the, all the Squire brothers I've had who've been knighted since, we all have different ways of learning. And so Sean had to adapt to each one of us. And he was courteous that way. Instead of saying, my way is the only way you're going to do it. He's like, Timur can't hear me again. He sees my lips moving. And he literally said this. He's like, I don't know. Like, why can't you be more like Tierlock? And Tierlock, he's like, why do you have to make such huge mistakes? And so it's, it's, it was just a process. So through all of us, he really refined his teaching, um, his teaching theology and education and how he does it and how it presents. And it's been really neat to see how he prog how he's progressed on and the way he's able to be like, okay, this is not going to be for everyone, but let me try to explain to you the best way. If you need help, come see me after class and I'll help break it down a little bit more. And he does that. He does it quite well. And as part of your, um, your teacher student relationship with Sean, was it always sort of a night track? Um, yeah, absolutely. Well, a night track, yes, not a fighting track. Does that make sense? Explain it. Okay, so sometimes people think nights, they think fighting, because that's probably one of the more business that we do. But one of the things that, there are several things I learned and several things I, I passed on. Um, one is it's not enough to be a fighter. Great, you can fight, cool. A million people can fight. What else do you do? All right, there's this thing called service. This dream does not function without service. The people who are behind the scenes, the people who are in front of the scenes, you know, whether that's autocratting an event, uh, doing a fee steward, holding an office, um, sitting on a baronial throne, sitting on the kingdom throne, any one of these levels of service is service. And you don't do it for the sake of doing service, you do it because it needs to be done. And to me, that's part of the night track. Um, as well as, and one thing, these are all things that, because when I first started, I'm like, just fighting, but then opened up to the bigger picture. So that was part of it. Arts and sciences. You know what? You, you, great, you can do service. You can do fight. What else can you do? Can you sew? Can you, you know, can you explain the difference between, you know, why the Mongols would have used a recurve bow and why the Welsh would use long bow. Can you tell us the, not just the geographic difference, but the benefits, pros and cons? I only bring up the bow thing because it's one that I can relate to. Um, and so it's like, all right, let's, let's find an arts and science. Let's find something that I can really dig into. Um, and it was, once again, part of that thing. All right, great. You've got this down. Um, let's, uh, what, 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 can you, do you know what a device is? Do you know what basic heraldry? And for the basic heraldry, actually, I need to give some kudos off to a gentleman named uh, Michael Bolecki. He's a knight in our kingdom. Um, Michael is really good at helping. Sean, I remember this, and this is something really cool, because Sean's like, hey, you're going to go to Michael. Michael's going to teach you about heraldry. And it's not that Sean couldn't, but it's that whole mentality that I don't know everything. Right. And so it's like, and Michael's like, 
all right, come here, we're gonna, you're gonna blaze it like a sandwich. First is the base, and then, and and he was really super patient with me, and while I fudged things up and helped me create my device and helped me pass my device and discovered why, and and it's all this stuff, all this these these parts of that night path that separates us from a lark, you know, or a different lark, depending on who you talk to, because it's 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 the tangible, it's what makes us who we are as a dream as a society so the night path yeah but along that way i discovered it isn't just about being able to fight well being well-rounded helps you be invested as a peer i think too um oh, because you can have an appreciation for all the different aspects of the sca which i think is super important and i think that what a great um tool, I guess, to, to teach the well-roundedness and to refer you out to people that um, are experts, you know? Oh, yeah. No, it, it really is. Like, there are, if I have questions, if I have questions, like, um, I'm going to throw this out there because I know they're, they're listening, like, if I have questions about archery or bows, I'll talk to Braden. Um, if I have um, questions about garb and garb construction, I'll either talk to the, the, the our main people I can talk to, but there's certain individuals that are top of my hit list. Um, and, you know, Cortland is one of them as well, her Grace Cortland, as well as um, her Grace Karin. You know, there are a lot of people out there when it comes down to service uh, and people I look at with, with a certain amount of, wow, this is, that's some severe service. But just because they don't do it for the sake of, love and glory they do it just because they do um her grace sati who you know she uh, she has had to do some amazing unconditional and and quite unorthodox service in the name of the dream that i think that most people wouldn't have but she did it because it needed to be done and that's kind of cool actually that's not true it's very cool <laughs> So how long um, after becoming um, Sean's guy did it take you to get knighted? Six years. Six years? <laughs> six years. <laughs> I remember that. Yeah, it was six years and it was a most entertaining path and journey. I loved it a lot. Still do because there's still so much more to learn, so much more to, to figure out what, which way is up and what, a better way to do it. Because there's always a better way. There's always a new way. There's always a different way. But um, the, the course from the time that, that I became his student to the point where I became a knight was six years. Now, that does not include the five years that came beforehand where I was just, you know, farting around having fun because, you know, it was cool to fight. <laughs> but it is. once again, it is. It's a, it's a blast. I love it. I absolutely love it. But the rest of it, the, 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 what, what makes a knight a knight or a peer a peer is a better phrase for it, was being able to take that path, go forward with it figure out everything and I was fortunate that my squire brothers and family we are we're all a bunch of a bunch of knuckleheads and so we you know we, we kind of cheered each other on and pecked each other on and and we're kind of like really really mean would not be the right word for it but it would be the perfect word for it you know because it was myself Tierlock, Damon, Michael, all of us really um Agadai all of us just kind of like just poked really hard at each other make sure that we are you know staying on with each other but at the same time one-upping each other so it's really really beautiful peer pressure <laughs> that's cool um did you have a vigil when you're united yeah yes i did and i was lucky i was surprised um so I think it's kind of cool, and this is this is a Artemisia cultural thing, is that when at a certain point when people are starting to get looked at in our kingdom, I'm sure it's very well maybe in several different kingdoms, um, the knight will ask the individual, so would you rather have a wham bam, or would you rather you know an extended vigil, you know for different reasons people prefer different ones. Um, for me, I wanted to be surprised. And so um, it was really simple. Sean's like, okay, I'm not saying it's going to happen anytime soon because you could always hit that reset button and it could happen 10 years from now. But, you know, it's getting to the point now where you need to work on your, 
um, nighting garb. And so I'm like, okay, great, let's, let's do that. And so I went and found three different shades of white, literally three different shades of white. And I made my, what I lovingly refer to as the wedding dress. And, you know, I made the garb out for him, made sure it was okay, fit, made sure it could be extended in case it was super long. <laughs> and uh, and uh, I, I handed it off to him, not knowing when it was going to happen. And then at what was one of our kingdom's biggest events, Uprising, uh, there was a, I generally don't like torchlight tourneys. There are too many weird things that can go wrong. And more often than not, there are too many people who are stupid when they fight in those tourneys. So there's a torchlight turning going on. Great sword torchlight turning. I love fighting great sword. Absolutely love it. Uh, it's probably my second favorite weapon style to fight. And I'm like, I don't want to. I don't want to. And um, it was actually Conrad von Zuberbuehler. Awesome dude. Love him to death. Miss him. He's, he's busy having fun with his life. Um, but he he's like, no, dude, I don't want to do this either. But you come and I'll go. I'm like, okay, fine, 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 fine. So get suited up you know it's like 10 dark 30 we're sitting there fighting and fighting and get knocked out of the list no big woo it's time to get get suited down and um they stop and uh his majesty Rymar, you know calls me forward it's like well how'd you do today i'm like oh you know it's like i i did okay he's like well i've seen you do better i'm like I, i'm pretty sure i could do better he's like i've seen you do better on a regular basis and then he called the shiv forward and then they ushered me into what we lovingly refer to as the vigil pup tent. And that's where Sean and the family greeted me. They had my, the wedding dress, put on the wedding dress. And I started my vigil around 1030 or so. And the final person was dismissed at around 930 in the morning. Oh. Yeah. And then um, in typical family fashion I went and hit the field but it was really cool it was great I, I it was it was an experience that I honestly when I started out I didn't think I could ever become because it was a dream because you know knights were those mystical people not people from Dragon's household but those those other people there's the other people <laughs> what did you feel like you were missing I mean you know if you didn't think it was possible just that um hindsight education you you don't realize you don't you don't realize that it is possible it's just that people say well knighthood's for them not us when you're young and dumb you don't think about it you take it for what it's worth and so now when i talk to people it's like do you want to become a member of the chivalry it's definitely possible i did it well like oh yeah but you're here I'm like no 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 you have no idea where I started from. Let me tell you a story. And depending on the time, depends on if they get the bridge version or the regular version. Um, but, you know, it is. It's, it's just the education, the ability of knowing that now it is possible. You just have to put in the time. And it's not just the stick time. And, yes, you need to be a great fighter, a good fighter. But all the other things, you know, responsibility for the dream, training other people how to fight, taking responsibility for someone else's part of the dream, that way they continue to move forward and grow. That's all part of the knighthood path that I had no idea, you know, when I first started 10 years prior to being sent on vigil, what it was really about. So was it your decision to make your own um, knighting vigil outfit or was that part of the deal? Um, it was my decision to do it. Um, once again, going back to everyone has to have an art, everyone has to have a science. You also have to look like something. You know, and there are two choices. Once again, going to back what Dragon said, you can either pay for it or you can put it yourself. Well, why not build it yourself? Right. I, I have the ability. I have a sewing machine. I have people who are willing to show me. Um, I, I can do this. How hard is it to cut and sew it together? Well, it's really difficult. <laughs> Actually, it's really hard. But the truth matter is... Think. <laughs> that's what's cool that's what's cool about it is that you can be like hey i did this you know that was my garb my first piece you know not my first piece but that that's something that i created you know i ironically when um due to the covid time off i've been cleaning my house a lot i came across my first key tunic i ever built 
And I remember I didn't want to throw it away because as time went on, I'm like, man, this is so bad that, that um, Dopey the Dwarf wouldn't wear this. It was just really, really horrible. But I kept it and I still keep it and I love it because it just reminds me, okay, this is how far we've gone. We've gone from this horrible ratty tunic to, you know, I was able to make my own vigil garb and that was, that was pretty cool. And now granted, there are a lot of people who did help me out and give me pointers like, okay, try this and try that, try to help me out. And it, 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 it was not an easy thing to do. But once again, that's what makes it cool. Right. It makes it more rewarding. And the, the yeah. cool thing about that too, is that then when you did rain and people made you clothes, you could appreciate the work and the time more because you've done oh, it. Absolutely. And I'm telling you the, the people who have been tasked throughout the years to be my uh, mistress of the wardrobes have done some fabulous work. Uh, I'll be honest, I don't deserve the work that they put in. They were able to make this schmo look good and that is really, really hard to do. Um, they, they've been patient, they've been, they've been courteous. Um, it's really funny, I remember um, there was one lady individual and she's like all right whenever you have time I'm like no 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 no. you are taking your time to measure me and so for me you set the time I will I will come around your schedule because that's how this works and she kind of looked at me a little bit where she's like what what I'm like no seriously you are doing me a huge favor you're doing me an incredible favor so you know because yeah I can make my stuff but it's not going to look anywhere nearly as cool as the stuff that you make you make some beautiful stuff and um and it was really cool uh, the scarf that she actually prepared for me was out of my norm it was uh 15th century italian <laughs> yeah i know right <laughs> so i'm like let's do it <laughs> like if that's your dream let's do it let's let's go let's let's just let's just have this let's have at it nice. so I still wear it, still break it out every so often. I enjoy it a lot because it's fun to watch people go. <laughs> <laughs> so um, what was the most memorable vigil advice you got? Oh, to this day, it's the one I pass on. It's still the one that I pass on. Um, and it doesn't fit for everyone, but it's stuck. And the phrase was, don't abstain. If you're in a circle, if it's your own kingdom, you're going to be asked yes, no, or abstain. You should know enough about the person who's being brought forward. They should have enough renown to be able to carry a yes or a no. If you hadn't heard their renown, hear what people are saying. Make, an appoint, make it a point. If you abstain, you're, you're giving up your right for this person to be part of your, your brother or sister. And that th this is your job, that you're the gatekeeper. So make sure to say yes or no. And there are going to be those weird times out where people, you know, who haven't played for 10 years would come back. But still, you, you, if someone gets brought up, you should be able to take the time to find out who and why. Because, you know, no one passes their first go. So if someone gets brought up and they're put on the whatever, they're just not past that time, maybe you should take some time to figure out who they are, what they're about. You know, talk to the the general populace, find out what the populace feel, but don't abstain. Yes or no. And that's, and you know, some people won't agree with that. And there are cases where, yeah, abstaining might be right. But for me personally, I will do everything I can not to abstain. Interesting. Just be engaged, sort of. Be engaged, be engaged. Know, know who you're talking about. I and mean, it's, it's our order, you know, whether it's, whether it's any, any of the four orders, it's our order. We should know, we should be, we should always be engaged and being part of that order. Um, so there so you go. Did you switch to the oval before you got knighted or after? Um, shortly after, really? shortly after. Um, yes, because I had to go back. Um, I was, when I, when I became Baron of Loxon, I was fighting with a heater. And then I stepped down, I wanted something a little bit different and I found the oval and I fell really in love with the oval and I enjoyed it. And so and I, I got married, I got not married, I got knighted the second year of my time as Baron, so. So how long um, after picking up the oval did you win crown with it? Um, 
maybe one, two years. Because I think I got knighted. There's two, maybe three years off than I, than I won my first crown. And it was, it was, it was, it was a process. It was fun. It was neat learning how that, that particular tool work. Because uh, at the time, we were very much so a heater-based um, kingdom. Really not the case anymore. Right now, it's, we have so many different, um, different shield styles. It's been, it's been beautiful to watch. Um, but at the time, you know, a very heater based kingdom. So picking up an oval, trying to figure out how the oval worked. Um, I was fortunate that I had uh, Sir Gregor, His Grace Floki, and Sean showing up to spider practice on a regular basis to give me my lumpins so I could learn how to use it better. <laughs> and, you know, they, they weren't really, at the time, they weren't, you know, they were pretty much, well, Floki was fighting with the round, but Greg and Sean fought with heaters. So getting their input, like, well, I've tried this and try that. I'm like, okay, yeah, let's try this. Bang. Well, let's try it again. Bang. Let's try it again. Bang. Hey, you know what? After the fifth or sixth time, I'm finally getting in the right position to block. Yay. <laughs> so, yeah. So it was about it was a few years after the fact and being able to um, take care of that. Hi, Sati. Or Grace Did you Sati. say that you wow. took um, some time off after getting knighted? Mm. And I didn't take time off. I, I wasn't, a, I wasn't, when I got knighted, I was on the baronial throne, so I didn't have time to take off, but I did make it a point that I wouldn't be taking on any students, any um, man-at-arms, what have you, let alone a squire, uh, for at least one year, because I wanted to figure out you know, who this knight timmer was, what, what direction, what, what am I going to be, what kind of knight do I want to be? And I didn't have that luxury because I was on the Bronial throne, but it was something that was very much so on the back of my mind the whole time. So service, um, served my, I did my time on the, finished up my time with the Bronial throne. And then I, shortly thereafter, I took on my first few squires and didn't really have much time off, but it was, it was about two or three years between stepping down from the Bronial throne to ascending to the Griffin throne for the first time. And was there a point where you decided that you were actually going to start training for crown and that was going to be your goal? Um, that's interesting. So to train for crown in our kingdom at the time, cultures changed, it happens. But when I was a squire, it was a, at the time, the format was, um, uh, double elimination, you know, standard format. So when I was, when I started fighting in crowns, I always made it a point to fight some of the upper echelon knights that were not from my area. You know, oh, I might be able to do, beat so-and-so because I see him on a regular basis. Um, I don't know who that guy is. Who's that guy, Sean? You should go fight him. Okay, that's who that guy is. And that's that. So Training for crown wasn't necessarily a thing because it was a winning crown was kind of what's the word I'm looking for. It was the accumulation of just training period. It was never, I'm going to try to win crown. It was a, we fight in crown to see exactly how good we are. And then we take that, those lessons back home and we work on them. And for the longest time, it was two and done, two and done, two and done. For me, that was fine because there was lots to learn, lots to learn. And so, yeah, no, fighting for crown to win crown wasn't something that I thought of as, okay, got trained to win crown. It was got to train just to be a better fighter, got to train to be a better trainer. Um, you know, the, these, it isn't important enough just for me to be good. I need to make sure um, that once again, going back to, I keep, I'll, I'll keep referring to these three, three but Floki, Greg and Sean, because those three were the three guys. There were three. There was a summer. I remember the summer very clearly, where those three would show up, and I would show up on a regular basis. Every once in a while, some other dude would show up, but you know it was pretty sparse fighter practice. And those three would give me my lumpkins and give me some knowledge, and I wanted to be able to pass that on. So training for crown, winning crown was kind of like a side thing. It was something I didn't think I'd ever achieve, honestly, because you know there are some incredible fighters out there that never one crown but it did fairly well and um, it's like you know we're just going to train to get better and as that time went on that's how you know that's how the evolution went 
Do you, do you do any kind of training or back then or even now to um, work on headspace for the tourney day? Music. Music. Absolutely. Music. <laughs> um, yes. Uh, for tourney days, it was, and it still is, music i you know and it, it doesn't mean i have to have my headphones in be like bah, bah, bah. it could be just to get that tune you know um the first crown i ever won um actually no the second crown i won second crown i won the song which made people laugh because they're like so what's the tune of the day i'm like feeling groovy simon and garfunkel <laughs> slow down you move the fast gotta make the flat snap laugh <laughs> so yeah <laughs> so, like that's way too slow to win crown to I'm like i know but it worked <laughs> so is that the go-to song no that was that day um one of the other songs was um brick brick house brick house was one of them um I was in a particularly punchy um, mood one day and um, rando, you know how you hit the rando button. Yeah, we're pulling into the last three miles to crown and I kid you not, Princes of the Universe by Queen came on. Oh yeah, I was jacked up then. Uh, so there isn't a necessarily, you know, go to. Um, so it, it, it varies, it varies a lot depending, it just happens to be whatever's there, so. Do you have a, a, a ritual? before you take the field? Salute my consort from the heart. Does that make sense? I know everyone can salute their consort, but it's that, that thing, that thing inside them when you make eye contact through your helmet and I get down on a knee, I give them a salute and I bow because I know I'm taking, they're, they're coming with me on that field. They're absolutely coming with me on that field. And without them, I'd just be another stick job. Um, funny story. Actually, funny, haha, -ha, but I think it's kind of cool. So Sage, my, my second queen, uh, third reign, her and I were talking. And I remember her saying once very bluntly, it's like, all I did was stand there. I'm like, oh, no, 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 you inspired me. And let me tell you how you inspired me. Because we were in the finals of Crown, and I was fighting Conrad von Crixen, and giant of a man, awesome guy, um, probably one of the cleanest fights we have in this kingdom, and also an opponent on that level I'd never beaten. So we're sitting there fighting, and I, I hit him once. I was shocked. I was surprised. I'm like, there's no way. There's hope. I might be able to win this. And of course, he retaliates by a beautiful flat snap, knocks me dead. I'm like, oh, crap. And I literally, my soul just gave up. I, I seriously just gave up. Like, I'm done. I can't do this. I, there's no way I can beat Conrad. Conrad. Conrad's Conrad. He's awesome. He's great. He's got range, like, range for miles. And I had defeated myself. I look over and see Sage. And she's white. She's frightened. And I'm like, I can't do this for another six months. I will not put her through this again for six months. I've got to step up right now, today. I've got to do it. And, and she did. She just inspired me. And I somehow now that I rolled a 20, I got really lucky. I hit Con out of the shot and he went down and it surprised me. And so I told Sage, no, you won that fight that day. Your inspiration, quite literally, the reason. I was able to win that fight because I'd given up until I saw you and I realized why we're here. Sorry, all serious there. Go back to that joke. <laughs> okay. Um, so what's your favorite part of reigning? <sighs> Honestly, um, two parts. One, give, doing the service, doing the behind the things, behind the same thing, and then giving out awards. I absolutely love giving out awards. I love, love our AOA ceremony. It's one of the, I, I, I'm biased. I really love what we do and how we do it. You've seen our ceremonies, right? No, tell me about it. Okay, so our AOA ceremonies, um, it started with Basil. 
Uh, he's the one that started because there was a that's our thing when people always you know come into court you know do you wear steel in the presence of the crown do you take it off what what do you do well basil because basil and renee are so can't say basil basil and renee sorry uh they came up with a solution to this and that was our aoa and so when when they would call they I remember this very clearly they they called the first person up that they gave an aoa to and in our kingdom we wear a collar of estate of a for Artemisia, and it's for the king, the queen, king's champion, and arts and sciences champion. All four of them have the collar of a. So Basil, Basil and Renee call this individual forward, and they're like, "Hey, we'd like to, you know, present you with a ward of arms." And because you are an armorer of our kingdom, we entrust you to wear live steel in our presence. And they gifted her a dagger, girded her with a belt, and then they presented her with an a. And then it's very clear to remind you always, no matter what kingdom you go to, that you started with us at Artemisia. This is an A to remind you of the bond between us and the chain of A's we wear, and you are populous. And so, you know, it's it's a cool little thing besides the scroll that you get that that yeah, you're 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 part of us, you're part of the dream. And it's really, really neat. And the cool thing is that as time's gone on, when we find out that people are getting the AOAs, at least what I've been doing, and I can't say I have the reins I've had, we will contact people in their households like, hey, person XYZ, we saw that you send in recommendations, we'd like to do this. Can you supply a belt and chain or belt and, uh, a belt and knife? And so a lot of times you get knives that are, because the, the, the days of the loaner knife are long since gone. And they'll, you know, like this came from your household. This is some, so-and-so made this. And as time's gone on, like I was fortunate. Um, there's a gentleman in our barony, Heinrich, who makes, some amazing swords and daggers and stuff. And during our reign, he actually made me 13 daggers that I was able to gift out as these AOAs, you know, these are hand forged from wow. billet to end. So yeah, it was, it was those, those, the AOAs are really, really cool. So I, I really love them because that's usually someone's first award, first crown kingdom award. It's like, congratulations, you're now one of us. <laughs> so yeah i love love giving those out i was gonna say I, giving out a dagger for every aoa would get expensive but um doing it that when way that, makes sense yeah uh, yeah no it would be it would be expensive and there there have been times when you know it's like one of those things where um where you just kind of find a way to do it uh, whether it's you go run in or buy it or you know the household members supply one it's it's important it's, it's very important as part of us as Artemisian. Okay, so I have to ask, I mean, at some point you switched to the Madu, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, so tell me what that switch was about and... Um, okay, so as I mentioned, it's funny you mentioned this. Um, ask. So with the, we started with the heater, loved the heater, it was great, it was wonderful, it was cool. Um, what else is out there? Oh, there's this oval. This is kind of cool. Cool. This is neat. Let's try the oval. Okay. Um, well, if one, two crowns with this, what else is out there? Oh, there's this weird Madu thing. Oh, okay. Let's, let's try that. It's the shield with two sticks. And besides the buckler that might be this big, there's a defense this big. Are you sure? I'm going to get hit a lot. I got hit a lot. And so it was, it was different. And then as time went on, I, I dropped the shield altogether and switch just to a regular gauntlet and a short spear, what I call it short spear. It's about four and a half feet long, maybe five. And that's that's why I use now. Uh, so it's, it's it's been an evolution of, I want to try this different because it's kind of different and why not? Because we can, we, we, we have this beautiful game that applies to so many different weapon styles. So that's, that's, how, that's how that evolution went. Uh, and then I remember at the time there was, found some documentation for the Moan, which is a stick that's 36 inches, 36 inches with the center held buckler. And I was fighting with that for a while. And then there was some weird rule that came out that said, no, you can't do that. It has to be at least 48 inches. Well, I guess we're going back to the mod. <laughs> is, it, is that your most enjoyable um, weapons form that you've run? No. No? no. What do you like the best? The, the weapon style I love the most, hands down, is the greatsword. I absolutely love the greatsword. It is 
fun. It is fabulous. When you have two people who are fighting with a great sword, it is just this insane dance of grace and strength they just don't see with sword and shield because the the beauty with the great swords and glaives is it's why I refer to as 100% or nothing. And I've had people like, well, what do you mean 100% or nothing? I'm like, if you have someone who weighs, you know, 185, or in my case, 220 pounds throwing a stick at you, that's five and a half feet long, and you have to question it, it probably wasn't good. <laughs> so it's like I said, it's 100% or nothing. Uh, you get a couple of people on there who really, um, Damon, uh, His Majesty Damon, I love, love fighting him with great swords, same as my Spire Brother Cheerlock, um, the Hood as well, uh, Marin, her Excellency Marin. Uh, these are all individuals who I really love fighting these mass weapons because it's such an intricate dance. Um, and it's, there's, there's that, just that, that unknown thing. It's like, wow, this is kind of cool. So I, I enjoy it a lot. It is, it is one that I, I enjoy, I like. It's a lot of work, a lot more work than uh, either Sword and Shield or Madu and Sword. It's, it's, it's a lot of work, but it's fun. So do you ever think you'll fight Crown with a great sword? I've been actually thinking about it. Uh, just, just because why not? Why not? You can, yeah. it's, it's, uh, yeah, it's like, um, you know, it's, it's, you got toys that are out there. Why not? Uh, I'm actually working on something specific for next crown. Uh, the great sword was a possibility. Then something else popped up and like, Oh, that toy looks crazy stupid. I'm going to get hurt, but I'm going to try it anyway. So, uh, so I have to ask yeah. what it is. You'll find out. Oh, <laughs> it's like that, is it? It's like that. It it's is. It's like that. <laughs> Fine. <laughs> but, you know, every once in a while, it's kind of fun to pull out something different. Like um, for the last few years, I've been running um, Shield and Spear, and that's been crazy fun. Like, lots of crazy fun. <laughs> so. so, you're a mod too. Yes. Um, when did you pick that up? When I was Baron. So I learned a lot on how to reign from a gentleman by the name of um, Ulrich McKellar, his Excellency, Excellency, uh, Excellency Master Master Ulrich McKellar. He, he really taught me a lot. He's also one of Brian Tarragon's squires. Uh, he, was, he was our predecessor and he said some really cool stuff. Actually, he was, he was a predecessor before, so. Um, but he's like, I asked him about it. I'm like, well, so what, what inspires you? He's like, well, it's really simple. I'm going to take the populace and there's a shining star out there. I'm going to go towards that star. That's, that's our destination. Now, if some members of the populace want to try something different. I will give them as much support as I possibly can. So fast forward a few reigns later, I'm on the Broyal throne. I asked my rapier guard, what can I do for you? You, you're here, you're part of the group. What can I do as Baron to help support your you're fighting and they were really straightforward they're like one week a month what one week a month we'd like to see you on the field one week a month i'm like sure i can do that one week a month why, why not uh, i think they probably regretted it especially the first two weeks <laughs> because my calibration was set to hard suit suddenness and um yeah they were super patient super patient with my education on the ability to zap someone pull back before you run them through like a shish kebab so and, and that's that's how it started it really started with my baronial guards me asking them what i can do for them and them being very 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 patient i'll be honest i was really afraid to fight in any rapier tourneys for the longest time because i was like what happens if i spear someone i don't want my card to revoke like there's that sir timmer and he just hurt someone it's like uh and sometimes i do sometimes i i gently accidentally hit it's like i'm sorry i'm sorry but um yeah that's how it started and i i fell in love with it because it was a different part of the game that i never really was going to venture into but here i was and the cool thing about it is by the time that happened i was already a knight uh, you know, uh, serving on, serving on, well, growing up around, well, halfway, almost there. And, um, and there was no, there's no pressure. I just go and support and help because, you know, he's just a sick jock on the weenie, wire weenie side. So, yay. <laughs> I know it's not PC, but I said it, <laughs> both of them. <laughs> but really, there was, there was no pressure, no pressure at all, except for, for me and not doubling over my friends. 
Um, but it was it was really kind of cool just to be able to relax and just fight and learn just for the sake of fighting and learning. It, it was very, very uh, refreshing. So how do you balance your time? Because you also do roller derby, right? So you do, roller, <laughs> you do armored, yeah. you do rapier, and you do them all well. So how do you how do you balance your time? Um. I lose my mind. <laughs> no. Uh, well, first of all, I don't have much there to begin with. Ah! <laughs> Get to it, Brayden. Uh, <laughs> so if you don't have one to begin with. Ah. Oh. No, no, no. Seriously, it is a matter of... Um, so, as far as the roller derby and the hard suit fight, or the fighting in general, the SBA in general, actually, they kind of bleed into each other. Uh, in the fact that no matter how hard someone hits me and people have like, people hit me so hard that I've lost feeling in my leg on the derby rink. But generally speaking, no one's going to club me as hard as some of the people have clubbed me on the hard suit field. On the flip side of it, on the hard suit side is that, or the, the fighting side, both hard suit and rapier, is that, you know, when derby was in full swing, I was getting anywhere from, depending on the week, from 12 to 14 hours of cardio. So I was the most in shape fat guy I knew. <laughs> so I was like, <laughs> like, yeah, I can run forever and eat some Cheetos. <laughs> so, uh, so yeah, it, they, they kind of bleed into each other. There's a point now where I don't like doing one without the other. It's just almost a little bit painful. Um, and then it's just uh, careful staggering, trying to figure out which fighter practices I can hit. And if there's, if I'm going away for a tournament, uh, let's say I'm going away for a roller derby tournament, make sure I'm um, putting in time to um, for my students and um, both um, the hard suit, the rapier, and actually archery as well, and putting time for them and flip side. And then it's, it's scheduling it. Uh, like, for example, my, my typical week before the whole COVID thing hit, like Monday nights would be rapier, actually, Monday nights would be derby. Uh, Tuesday nights would be derby. Uh, Wednesday, I would try to hit one of the fighter practices because we're fortunate that we have three or four fighter practices. Uh, Wednesday got kind of muddled, so that one had to get put away. But Thursday was archery. And then Friday, I was starting to go up to the Griffin's Lair practice and hit their, um, their fighter practice. On the weekends, I try to put in time, I would put in time um, to either fight on Saturday or go to an event. And then Sunday, I would go to... <laughs> I go to the household fighter practice for about two and a half hours, gear down, then run to Derby to do about three hours of Derby. So that was my typical week. So it got to the point where Wednesday did get cut out because I needed time for me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, Thursday was the archery. That's, that's why I did Thursday, archery. This is for archery. Whee, whee. <laughs> so archery too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Archery came about the same reason as the rapier stuff did, where it's like, actually, that's not totally true. I had reared. Reared's like, you're going to go shoot in the royal shoot, and you're going to represent well. So we're going to start training you today. But that's not for another five months. Today. Okay. <laughs> so between him and Brayden, I've had some very good mentors. All right. Do you have your sword with you? <laughs> As a matter of fact, I do. Dun, 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 dun. All right. <laughs> so you wear gauntlet, obviously. Yes. Yes, I do. Um, that I have to give kudos to Floki and Bartholomew Hightower. Floki started using uh, cross guard uh, a long time. I can't even remember. It's been so long. And then Bart took his pattern and do what, does what Bart does and makes it better. It makes it easier. It makes it super, super helpful. And so... Um, I, I pretty much use the, the, it's strictly now at this point. It's part of the reason why I can't do cut and thrust as well, because with cut and thrust, there's too much familiarity and I'm too afraid that I do not have the control where with rapier and armored combat, there's a big enough gap. Right. But some of the, some of the tricks I've tried because I've done it a few times and I feel like when it comes down to acceleration of speed, if I feel like I can ch cheat the speed or change the speed instead of choke, choking it up, I actually move my hand down here to the, pommel and throw the shot use that as my pivot point and just like accelerate towards the last part of the fight throwing it a little bit harder 
I actually caught myself doing that in a cut and thrust fight once. And I'm like, okay, hey, I'm done. I'm no, no, <laughs> no. Is, is that why you have tape on it so that you can use it like that or? Um, part of it, part of tape, but also because this every so often the bolt will snap and nothing's really more horrifying. Well, that's not totally true, but, but it's still horrifying slash entertaining when you're fighting someone, all of a sudden your, your counterweight, your sword starts feeling really weird because your pommel, you quite literally busted a nut and the same went flying. It's like, oh no. So yeah. And that's that, fun. that's aluminum? Uh, yeah, or... it's one of the aluminum ones. Okay. It is one of the aluminum ones. Um, this one was a gift. Um, her Excellency Marin made some beautiful ones as well. I like and it's gone to the point now the nice thing about something like this is that really fast really fast you stop blocking with the basket hilt <laughs> you figured out where the sword is um to the point now where I'll figure out where the cross guards are so instead of when the shot comes in instead of just being like here it is it's like okay there it is catch the sword redirect it then counter fire so it's been a lot of fun learning how you your handle kind of looks like it's shaped in a diamond is it shaped in a diamond or is that just it is shaped in a diamond it's a little okay. bit more like i prefer it a little bit flat and just it's it's just the way that it holds i've had a lot of trial and error a little bit different and but i kind of prefer it that way there's no oh you gotta do it this way i'm like uh you know what this, this kind of works for me so there it is plus uh, my gauntlets have enough play in them where i can hold it from here and then like most of us do right before impact the right. snap down. So, right. which everyone does now. Thank you, Hall. <laughs> and you have a thrusting tip, right? I mean, I, I've been on the end of that, so. <laughs> yes, I have, I have my courtesy tip. I have my courtesy tip. Yes, yes, I do. Now here's an irony is that with the courtesy tip though, um, with all my squires, all my students, I don't let them have one for a while because they need to learn how to use the blade. Right. Uh, in fact, to the point nowadays where uh, if I hit you with a stabbing tip, uh, it's more of an attack of opportunity than straight in. Even when I'm fighting with the with the short spear, I'll use that more to go to an opponent into something than to actually if I manage to hit him, that's awesome. That means I rolled with 20, I got lucky. But I don't ever really expect to hit someone with this either one of the stabs right off the bat. It's always like an attack of opportunity. It's like, okay, they've something's happened to put their guard down here and my sword's in a position where I can now slide it up and you know, do a courtesy tap in the jaw or something. And how long is your sword? It is. <laughs> uh. Um, uh, it is about, the stick itself is 36 inches. Then I have the standard, like what, inch and a half, two inches uh, stabbing tip. And then the pommel itself is about another, uh, about another inch, two inches. So overall, we're looking at about 38 inches. So, yay. Cool. <laughs> and do you plane? It doesn't look like you're, you plane your blade. Is it just round? I don't. I don't. I, I tried it once. And what came down to is I'm, a, I'm basically a lazy human being. <laughs> <laughs> and so I'm like, if I like it, I'm going to keep doing it. And if I keep doing it, I'm going to have to do this. <sighs> no. <laughs> so. so do you have to um, have a lanyard with that or? I do. Um, I went out to, I went out to see my squire today, and so the lanyard's off because it is. I'm not calling you out. I just wondered. No, 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 no. I normally do, but it's in the saddlebag right now because if you're driving on a motorcycle, the last thing I want is any of my gear to fly off, and the lanyard's just kind of flapping in the wind. And yeah, not that it's happened to me once, but it's like showing up without lanyard, and they're like, "Your grace, where's your lanyard?" I'm like, "Uh." <laughs> Either the dog ate it or it got lost on the motorcycle ride. <laughs> right. All right, fine, fine. I'll just cut some string off my lamellae and make wine here thing. So ever since that experience, it gets tucked in the saddlebags on trips. <laughs> okay, so we're we're down to the end to the final ten. Are you ready? Rapid fire, last ten. Oh, the final ten. Okay, be gentle. <laughs> All right. If you could fight anyone in the world, who would it be? Honestly. Um, that one's simple. Uh, my, 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 my grand knight, uh, Brian. Uh, reason being, whenever I fight Brian, it's bizarre because it's not a, hey, let's match weapon styles. It's not a, okay, I'm going to beat you up. You're going to beat me up. It's a, what do you feel like today? Bastard swords? Bastard swords it is. Five passes? Great. And it's fun. 
there's something about it when oh he and i fight that the ego is just pushed aside and it's just beautiful fight for the sake of a beautiful fight and it's really really cool it's great because it's great to get your lumpkins in by someone who you know knows their stuff but at the same time isn't being like has doesn't have to prove himself so that, that's i love fighting brian for that all right who would you like to see reign in your kingdom so gregory of beck and his incredible lady heloise these two are like i mentioned greg before he has done so much for our fighting community and our kingdom as a whole. Um, Heloise as well, arts and sciences, she's just amazing. These two are, they are what the dream is all about. And he, he's busy with mundane life. She still plays when she can, but really those two, if I could put anyone on the throne, or if, they're, they're the ones that everyone in Artemisia is waiting for because they know that the show is just going to be amazing. Nice. If you could talk stick with anyone in the world for an hour, who would it be? Talk stick or talk fighting? Same thing. Ba, 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 ba. Um, fighting, he's dead. It'd be Bruce Lee. Um, stick, new people. Just get their impression. Figure out what they're about, what they want to do help them help them as much as I've been fortunate I've had some insane and great teachers not mutually exclusive <laughs> but I'd like to be able to pass that on that's cool all right what's your favorite medieval-esque or period movie period I love that uh there's two of them oh um two towers love it kingdom of heaven the extended version of course <laughs> <laughs> Both right. of them are, are ones I can watch over and over and over again. Okay. If you could add a rule to the rules of the list, what would it be? Have fun. Have fun. <laughs> Some people just get tied up and that's so uptight. Well, you, really you are sort of, I don't know if the right word is notorious, but you are notorious for your giggle when you fight. What? We don't talk about your giggle, but it's pretty <laughs> awesome. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> okay. What is your favorite tournament format? Um, honestly, I really, I thought he was crazy when he brought it in, but I really like the way that um, Artemisia does their crowns, where it's a pool list, and then you take the top two or top four, depending on the size of the pool, then the best two out of three, because it, it eliminates, it does a couple things. One, it eliminates the luck, and it also allows people who, like I said at the very beginning, I'd go two and done. Well, for those quiet people who are like me, now they get, you know, six and done or eight and done so it's not just about the two and done anymore does that eliminate your challenge in though what do you mean um like like in Ontario, we challenge up like uh the the per first person on the squire side and president gets to challenge their first fight and everybody challenges over um yes and no it, tr it eliminates the fact that you can't pick the whole field and let's face it i'm not sure if i could pick 10 fighters from on tier because your guys' pool is so deep and there's so much insanely good popcorn. It's like, oh, I can't fight any of these guys. So if I was Squires, I think I'd have a rough time choosing your kingdom because you, you have some amazing fighters there. Um, but, the worst part of getting knight is you don't get to challenge anymore. <laughs> yeah. But on the flip side, that means if you're in a pool, um, you, you're in a pool with, you know, two or three of your peers, two or three up and coming non-belts and two or three knights or better. So it eliminates the challenge, but at the same time, you get more of a range of what did, I, what did you see? What can I work on? You know, oh, great. Nowadays, you have footage of everything. So cool. Um, what's your favorite event? Melee Madness. Um, Melee Madness is an event held at a, at a brick and mortar castle in, uh, in Provo, Utah, of all places. And it's really cool from a fighting aspect. They've, it's actually evolved where they t it teaches arts and sciences classes. So imagine that you're on a field with a castle in the background, pavilions up front, banners going, and then the second day there's a formal paw of arms happening. And it's really, really cool. Just the whole pageantry of it all is just that's where the dream comes alive for me. You've sold me. <laughs> no, seriously. When, if, if anyone could come to an Artemisian event, that is one of the top ones. Um, that I'd list, uh, that, that'd be like right up there. All right, I'm gonna have to put it on the list. 
Um, if you could have any helmet, regardless of cost, what kind would it be? I really love the spiral domes that um, that you find in the Turkish Ottoman time frame. So I'd like something like that. Something that's very, very period, very They're beautiful. so beautiful. Yeah. I always think now, of an orange juicer, but. Because it is. <laughs> it is right? You know, it's a watermelon. It's like, woo. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> they are beautiful though. They're beautiful. Um, it's Saturday <laughs> morning in Australia and several people want to talk to you about last night. What did you do? Uh, I flew kites. You flew kites? I flew kites. True story. We've done this before. <laughs> In fact, it used to be our thing. It's like, oh, look, it's Saturday night. Nothing else. Let's, we'll break out the kites and um, attach little glow sticks on them so you can see where they go. In fact, we have some very intoxicated, well, you always have intoxicated people, but some of them walking around because you're on the battlefield. Doo -doo -doo. They're like, oh, are those lights? <laughs> They're like, ah! <laughs> All right. Um, who is your favorite fight ever? Who is my favorite fight ever? Oh, that one's easy. That one's easy. That would be um, His Majesty Damon McMillan, and that would be at 50 year when he and I, uh, there's a, there a tournament, there's an Arthurian tournament. It was really, really cool. And he and I got to face off each other in that tournament. It was just really, really, it was awesome uh, on several levels, one of which is we managed to because we double killed in the preliminaries when when the we decided to fight it over again because we can't have something like that happen so we ended up fighting great swords and once again going back to beauty and the art it was just really neat to see that at that level at 50 at the 50 year anniversary it was fun cool and then the bonus question is who is the cleanest fighter in your kingdom there's several of them uh i mentioned conrad earlier today Conrad is uh, insanely clean. Um, his great Sean got a nickname once, Mr. Clean. Um, something that we try to push on our non-belts, not always successful, not always successful to shiv as well, is that you go to practice to get better. And so don't let your opponent fall to a bad shot. Also, don't throw a bad shot to your opponent. Know the difference between the two. So it's something that we try, we try to, to drill out the go to win fighter practice for winning fighter practice. No, you go to win fighter practice just to get better. And so, you know, the, the two most clean ones, honestly, right off the bat, Conrad and Sean. Um, but outside of that, we really try to, to do what we can to bring it, to make that part of the dream as much as beautiful as we can. Um, I'm actually going to have to also throw um, on the rapier side, uh, Hago who just recently got elevated to the uh, order of defense, um, as well as Drayden, who also is a member of the order of defense. Very clean, very beautiful fighters. So both of them, all four of those individuals, if I could fight like them, I'd be a happy camper because of how clean they are. Cool. Well, thank you very much for talking to me. I really appreciate it. And uh, it was really fun. And we went an hour with like no problem at all. So. <laughs> we, talk to you. we didn't even really talk about you reigning very much but whatever so uh <laughs> yeah, they're all the same like go laugh have fun <laughs> and then tomorrow i'm talking to duke felix of ramsey from the middle so that should be super fun too so thanks yeah. everyone for joining us thanks again right. timmer bye-bye <laughs>